Hello and uh, welcome all of you students. Let's continue with our next uh, lecture uh, from the unit six. In the previous lecture, we have discussed regarding the loop optimization and different techniques of the loop optimization. So today we'll discuss the next topic in the unit six. So today we'll discuss about the different uh, categorization or phases of the optimization and uh, also uh, in detail, we will discuss about the what is exactly is the local optimization and uh, what is the DAG based local optimization. This point we will see in details and in the next lecture, uh, then we'll see the details of uh, global optimization. So already we have discussed what is exactly the concept of optimization in compiler design. So the code optimization in compiler design is nothing but the part of the synthesis phase. Uh, that is a backend uh, where different transformation techniques are there in the code optimization. And uh, what exactly the code optimization that you know, modifying the program, that is your intermediate code. Uh, if you are performing the code optimization before the final machine code generation. So rearranging or modifying your uh, particular intermediate code uh, so that uh, the program can be become uh, time efficient and the space efficient or the memory efficient and speed of the program education will be improved. So this modification and rearrangement that we do in the code optimization that must be done <clears throat> without affecting the final meaning of the program or output of the program. Okay. So same thing I have mentioned here is through the code optimization, uh, we try to improve the intermediate code by making it uh, consume the fewer resources like fewer uh, CPU and memory so that the faster running machine code will be get generated afterwards. Okay, so that is the aim of uh, performing the code optimization and through the code optimization process uh, following objectives uh, can be achieved like uh, the optimization uh, must be correct it must not be uh, what we can say the meaning of the program should not be ch get changed okay the output of the program should not be get violated or changed then through the optimization the speed of the execution uh, and the performance of program should we should we get in increase these are the some objectives okay and uh, the compilation time also uh, must be uh, kept reasonable or the compilation time also uh, should be get uh, uh, decrease okay means within a less amount of time compilation should get uh, performed and uh, through the optimization it should not be happen that uh, compilation process is get delay understood so that is all the things uh, uh, that already we have discussed what exactly compiled uh, code optimization and why we need to perform the code optimization, etc. Okay. So generally the code optimization for the code optimization, uh, for the code optimization, there are the two types means uh, depends on when the code optimization get performed depends on that there are the two types of the code optimization. Okay. In that first is the machine independent uh, code optimization and second is the machine dependent code optimization. So already I told you when the code optimization get performed uh, before the code generation, then that optimization is called as a machine independent optimization. Same thing I have mentioned this code optimization phase attempt to improve the intermediate code to get it better target code as a output. Okay, so this get performed before the code generation and on which code these optimization get performed on the intermediate code. Okay. So the part of the intermediate code which is transformed or get changed does not involve any CPU register or the memory location, uh, etc. etc. Okay. So uh, it is called as a machine independent because uh, when the uh, uh, particular changing changes are being done in the intermediate code through the different transformation technique, there is a no need to think about the CPU register instructions and uh, memory location, etc. Understood. So that is the reason it is referred as a machine uh, independent. Then uh, second category, second type we have the uh, machine dependent and 
this is get performed after the port generation if you see the back end of the compiler okay then you know this is a back end of compiler like this uh, this is a code optimization phase so intermediate code is given as a input to the code optimizer phase this is a code optimization code optimizer phase then next we have the code generation okay so to generate the code uh, optimized code is sent okay from the code optimizer phase and then after the code generation also there can be a code optimization get performed okay and the code optimization which get performed after the code generation that is called as a machine dependent optimization or machine dependent code optimization okay so here i mentioned the machine dependent optimization is done after the target code has been generated and when the code is transformed according to the target machine architecture okay so uh, as you can see the this this uh, uh, optimization get performed after the target code generation so uh, it involves the cpu register and memory references and the different kind of uh, machine instructions are there uh, uh, has to be considered when you are performing them uh, optimization after the code generation okay so uh, machine dependent optimizer put effort to make the maximum advantage of the memory hierarchy okay so code gen uh, the optimization which we perform the after the machine after the code generation that is referred as a machine dependent optimization and uh, through this machine dependent optimization uh, the modification can be done on the finally generated target code uh, so that the execution speed can be get improved understood so there are the two times uh, where you can perform the where the compiler can perform the where the optimization can be performed that is before the code generation that is a machine independent optimization and after the code generation that is a machine dependent optimization okay then now here we have to discuss the two types uh, phases of the optimization okay uh, so generally there are the uh, two types of the optimization are there okay uh, in that first we have the local optimization and second we have the global optimization okay so uh, here you can see there are the two types of the optimizations are there uh, as i told you one is the uh, local optimization and another is the global optimization okay now uh, from the name only you can understand what exactly it means local optimization means what and the global optimization means what okay so first we discuss about the uh, local optimization so transformation which are applied to the small blocks of the statements means optimization or modification or rearrangement which is done to the only small block of statements small block of statements in the sense to the only single basic block okay if you apply the optimization within a basic block only for the one basic block only now you must understood what do you mean by the basic block last time you have seen the basic block is nothing but the consecutive sequence of statement without any branching or jumping okay so if we perform the optimization uh, to only the some uh, small block of statement or if we perform the optimization within a basic block only for only one basic block then that kind of optimization is called as a local optimization understood and this kind of optimization generally get performed before the global optimization so here third statement i have written it is applied to the basic block in isolation basic block in isolation means what this kind of optimization is done uh, done uh, in case of only the single basic block at a time okay uh, that is the reason here it is mentioned applied to the basic block in isolation so separately for each basic block if you perform the optimization restricted to the restricted to that uh, single basic block only then only that optimization is referred as a local optimization now let's take the example so generally local optimization is also called as a intra block uh, optimization intra block in the sense within a basic block one understood now if you see this is the example for example you have the statements like x equal to 10 a equal to b plus c and z equal to x plus y so there is a no jump instruction in between this this instruction will get executed sequentially so this is a uh, sequence of consecutive statements that is the reason we can call this form one particular basic block understood now if if the uh, optimization is performed in between this in between these three statements only 
which is within a, this basic block for example we call it as it has a basic block one only so if you perform the optimization within this three statement only and within this uh, single basic block only then that is called as a local optimization understood so like this if you perform the uh, optimization like as x equal to 10 a equal to b plus c so here z equal to instead of writing x plus y you can write the 10 plus y because already we know the value of uh, compiler already know the value of x is 10 so compiler do what compiler now which what is the name of such kind of optimization technique it is called as a constant propagation okay last time we have studied the techniques so this is the constant propagation technique which is related with the local optimization so constant propagation local optimization which you can call to this particular transformation that we have done here so here you can see you have apply the or you have done the rearrangement of the code or modification of the code within a basic block only okay within a this basic block only understood that is the reason it is called as a local optimization okay so here we are considering only the single basic block and doing the rearrangement of the code that is the reason it is called as what local optimization okay now as compared to that you can see the we have the second type of optimization that is a global so from the name also you can understand global is a, a slightly different from the local okay local in the sense which is being performed on the some restricted uh, for the restrict some for the some restricted set of statement only so global so global uh, generally perform between the basic blocks okay so here i have mentioned transformation are applied to the large program segment that include function procedure loops etc etc so global optimization generally get performed between the basic blocks okay so here you can easily understood the difference between the local optimization and the global optimization so local optimization is called as a intra block whereas the global optimization also called as a inter block means inter block in the sense the optimization which get performed between the basic blocks okay not just for the single basic block but optimization get performed between the basic blocks it means what when we are doing the optimization uh, if you have to uh, interact with the another basic block to perform the optimization if you have to uh, if, if you have to communicate with another basic block to do the optimization then that is considered as a inter block code optimization that is called as a global optimization okay now let's take the example for example there are the four basic blocks as you can see basic block 1 basic block 2 uh, basic block 3 and this is a basic block 4 okay now uh, for for some particular intermediate code uh, these basic blocks are formed now how the basic block form what are the rules for that that already i told you here we have just taken the example uh, so that you can understand what is the concept of global optimization now here in this basic block b1 x equal to 10 y equal to 0 d is greater than p and then on the basis of condition the two other basic blocks are here a equal to b plus c c equal to k and b3 m greater than n and b4 a c is equal to x plus y plus z now this is this example we have seen here okay this example we have seen here this is also the example of constant propagation which is called as a now but this is a local constant propagation why we are calling it as a local because it is get perform only within a basic block now this is also the example of constant propagation but this is a global constant propagation now why it is we are uh, why i am calling this as a global let's see okay so as i told you these are the four basic block b1 b2 uh, b3 okay and the b4 as you can see now how we can uh, how the uh, optimization can be performed here like this uh, now optimization of this this is being shown here like this like this is a before optimization this is after the optimization same this is a this is a before optimization this is a after optimization now what changes we are uh, can be done here now changes is done in the basic block b4 here as you can see now here you can see a is equal to x plus y plus j now instead of writing the x plus y you can directly write here 10 plus 0 because you already know the value of x is 10 y equal to 0 understood so this so we are, we can propagate the constant okay propagating the constant in the sense replacing the uh, variable with the uh, that value uh, replacing the variable with, uh, with particular constant value in the next part of the program okay so here instead of writing the x equal to uh, s is equal to x plus y plus z you can write here 10 plus 0 plus 0 
or you can directly write like this also 10 plus z also you can write here and because of that you can easily see uh, there is a no need to write the x plus y here understood so while you are performing this optimization okay this block b4 this block b4 has to interact with the block b1 understood so b4 can perform the optimization by interacting with the block basic block b1 understood so here now if you see this example here you don't have to interact with other basic block understood you are performing the optimization within a basic block but here to perform the optimization the one basic block has to communicate with the other basic block understood one basic block has to interact with another basic block only then the optimization can be performed that is a constant propagation and if such kind of things is there that is called as a global optimization okay so this global optimization part in the next unit also we will discuss uh, now you know to perform the global optimization there is a need of different kind of techniques also like that is considered as a control flow and data flow analysis techniques are required to achieve the global optimization understood so this graph is nothing but the called as a control flow graph last time also i told you this graph is called as what control flow graph what do you mean by the control flow graph the graph where uh, or which is also referred as a directed bar graph the graph where uh, the flow of control of information is shown okay that particular graph is considered as a control flow graph that last time already told you i, I already uh, i already told you okay so to do the uh, global optimization two techniques are required the control flow analysis and the data flow analysis techniques are required okay so details related with this the next time also we will discuss so i hope all of you are glad uh, got the clear idea what exactly is the global optimization uh, local optimization and the global optimization and what are the differences between them okay then uh, now uh, now related with the local optimization there are the different kind of code optimization techniques are there okay so today we will discuss the what are the different techniques are there in the local optimization now these techniques already we have discussed in the uh, common technique of optimization still as a part of the local optimization we we have to discuss these techniques here now you can see the uh, as already we have discussed optimization uh, which is performed within the basic block that is called as a local optimization so it is a simple kind of optimization technique okay no need to analyze the whole uh, code or the all the procedures or the functions of your program so generally there are the following uh, techniques are uh, there which comes under the category of local optimization like constant folding constant propagation then algebraic simplification operator strength reduction copy propagation dead code elimination and lastly we have the common sub expression elimination is also considered as a, uh, what you can say the local optimization technique okay so uh, here we have uh, constant folding okay so constant folding is what already last time we have discussed evaluation of expression at a compile time whose of runs known to be a constant means instead of evaluating the expression during the run time if it is possible uh, the evaluation can be done at the compile time only okay then that is called as a constant folding okay so uh, let's see here if an expression such as 10 plus 2 into 3 is there in your code the compiler can compute the result of that during the compile time only the result will be the 16 and thus uh, the compiler replace this expression with such kind of values okay so all the values are present then evaluation can be done at the compile time only. understood so this kind of uh, uh, thing is called as a constant folding okay this technique is referred as a constant folding okay so uh, if all the values or constants are available then such expression can be evaluated during the compile time only and for this expression uh, in the next part of the program the value 16 can be get replaced understood by the compiler so that is the uh, constant folding here as i have mentioned the evaluation of expression at a compile time whose operand operand in the sense values are known to be the constant so if an expression such as this is uh, encountered by a compiler compiler can compute the result at compile time only as a 16 and thus replace the expression with that value. okay so replacing the uh, variable uh, with the constant value or doing the evaluation of certain constant value expression at the compile time that is considered as a constant pool okay then next we have the uh, constant propagation that also we have discussed now 
if a variable is assigned some constant value then subsequent use of that variable can be replaced by that constant okay let's see the example suppose same 4 equal to 0 then f0 equal to same 4 same 5 equal to 1 f1 equal to same 5 same 6 equal to 2 i equal to same 6 now can you call this as a only a single basic block yes this is a single basic block there is a no jumping is function these all the instruction will get executed uh, sequentially so this is a single basic block if the optimization is performed uh, within the single basic block only then that is considered as a local optimization understood so that you can see here uh, that is the reason this comes under the uh, category of local optimization this constant propagation technique so how the optimization can be performed here now for this two statement you can directly write the single statement f0 equal to 0 understood no need to utilize the term for here then again for this two statement you can directly write f1 equal to 1 then for this two statement you can directly write i equal to 2 understood so this is nothing but the optimized code and how you have done this optimization only within a single basic block block okay so that is a constant propagation what what uh, what it uh, what it means if a variable is assigned a constant value then subsequent use of that variable can be replaced by that constant understood so like temp is here uh, here temp is assigned the value for the temp zero is value zero value is assigned understood so then why should you write why should we write here temp 4 we should write here only the zero only understood that is the reason you can directly write here for this two statement optimized code can be write like this f0 equal to 0 understood so uh, that is the constant propagation local optimization okay then uh, next we have algebraic simplification okay so uh, algebraic simplification uh, means here we uh, utilize some algebraic properties okay or the operand operator combination we uh, make here and uh, so using the uh, uh, properties of the algebraic algebra if you do the optimization then it is referred as algebraic uh, simplification optimization so let's see the example for example such kind of expression we used to write in the program code like x equal to 0 now there is no need to write such kind of things directly you can write x because adding the 0 to the x it, uh, it is not making any kind of sense or 0 plus x also you can directly write x so compiler does this kind of optimization okay if if the programmer has written such kind of things in, uh, in his program the compiler automatically do this kind of replacement if you are written x equal to x into 1 then it is also not having any sense so it can be written directly like as x 1 into x can be written like this 0 by x instead of writing 0 divided x directly you can write this 0 x minus 0 also not making any sense so compiler can do the optima its optimization as a x so uh, using the some properties of the algebra uh, uh, the kind of optimization performed that is referred as a algebraic simplification okay so this is a uh, this is a, if you consider this a uh, now this is a this is instruction will get executed sequentially understood so this is for me one basic block so if you do the optimization within a basic block that is referred as a local optimization okay then uh, next we have the operator strength reduction technique that also previously we have seen where we replace the less exp we replace the high strength operator uh, high strength operator is get replaced by the low strength operator <coughs> okay uh, like <coughs> if there is a certain kind of expression i into 2 or 2 into i so for that you can simply write i plus i because plus is less expensive less strength operator as compared with the star if i divided by 2 like this is a expression then you can write it like this i into 0.5 because strength of the uh, uh, division operator is more as compared with the star so you can write star for that and you can write the expression like this 0 minus i <coughs> okay it can be written like this minus i only f into 2 so f into 2 can be written uh, f into 2 or 2.0 into f can be written like this f plus f 
okay so replacing the star uh, multiplication with the uh, plus so this kind of uh, uh, things is there in the operator strength reduction so it is also get performed within a basic log that is the reason this also comes under the category of uh, local optimization technique okay then we have the copy propagation okay so copy propagation it is just like the constant propagation but here uh, we are not using the constant value non constant value are uh, if you are if in your program non constant value are utilized and then uh, if the optimization is performed on that that is called as a copy propagation like for example here you have written temp2 equal to temp1 and in next temp3 equal to temp2 into the temp1 okay now uh, and then like this uh, statement we have temp4 equal to temp3 temp5 equal to temp3 into temp2 like this so now uh, for this two expression okay now you can directly write the uh, the optimization will be get performed like this temp3 equal to temp1 into the temp1 what temp3 equal to temp1 into the temp1 okay what is the reason behind that because you have already here what you have done you have assigned temp1 to the temp2 so instead of writing temp2 here directly you can write the temp1 understood then uh, also here you can see for these two expression also uh, the optimization can be performed and only one uh, statement can be written as a optimized code temp5 equal to temp3 into the temp1 temp5 equal to temp3 into the temp1 why temp1 you have written because uh, as you can see here you have assigned the temp1 to the temp2 understood okay that is the reason uh, then uh, uh, for the uh, next c equal to temp5 plus temp4 for this expression uh, this expression can be written like this c equal to temp5 plus temp3 because here you can see you have assigned temp3 to the temp4 so instead of temp4 here you can directly write the temp3 so uh, here non uh, non constant values are getting propagated okay instead of constant value non constant value getting propagated that is the reason such optimization is called as a copy propagation understood so this is a continuous sequence of statement you can call it as a one basic block and if the optimization performed within the basic block that is referred as a copy propagation local optimization understood then uh, next uh, we have next technique we have that is a now dead code elimination okay i forget to write here actually it is a dead code elimination okay so already last in the previous uh, uh, optimization technique lecture also i told you what is this if an instruction result is never used the instruction is considered as a dead and can be removed so sir so sometimes from the programmer what happen programmer write the multiple lines of code and in that code such but there can be a single or multiple instruction uh, uh, and that instruction never get utilized okay uh, then that particular certain instruction has referred as a dead code understood and it is it can be optimized by the compiler by removing that dead code understood so consider if you consider the statement like this temp1 equal to temp2 plus temp3 and if temp1 is never used again then we can eliminate it understood so if if there are the certain lines of code is there and if you see this is the line number 10 okay and the below also uh, number of statement but in this programming uh, in this uh, program or in this code if this instruction is never get utilized then this is considered as a dead instruction or the dead code so elimination of that dead code is also comes out of the category of uh, uh, local optimization that is a considered as a local dead code uh, elimination as a local optimization technique okay then uh, and lastly we have the common sub expression elimination the same example i am taking just uh, that we have taken in the our previous lecture so first you need to understand what exactly mean by the common sub expression so the expression that is been already computed before and appear again in the code for computation that is called as a common sub expression okay so uh, as the name suggest uh, this technique 
related with the element thing there is such kind of common sub expression so you can call the redundant expression also you can also call the redundant expression to the common sub expression so redundant expression are eliminated to avoid their recomputation understood so the already computed result is used in the further program when required okay so for example if you consider this sequence of statement S one equal to four into I, S two equal to A of S one, S three equal to four into J, S four equal to four into I, S five equal to N, S six equal to like this. Now in this sequence of statement, the four into I is already computed here, and still it is being getting computed once again here. So this is the redundant expression, understood? And uh, how it can be then optimized? So you know to optimize it, you can write this instruction first, then S two, S three. So you can directly eliminate this. sub expression as a part of the common sub expression elimination and you can write the rest of the part as it so if you consider uh, this has a one now can you call it as a one basic block yes because there is no jumping etc etc jump in this code all the instruction statement will get executed uh, one by one sequentially so this is a uh, sequence of consecutive statements understood so it is forming the one basic block so if we perform the optimization within this basic block then it is considered as a local optimization and the technique for that is common sub expression elimination so common sub that is the reason common sub expression elimination come under the local optimization also so this is considered as a local uh, common sub expression elimination okay so within a global optimization also uh, this technique is there understood that when you see that that time i will tell you okay now so uh, that is all about the different kind of techniques uh, in case of the uh, local optimization okay now uh, next we have to study that is a next uh, point that we have to study is the dag based uh, local optimization now already uh, before this also we have studied the concept of uh, dag so here as you know uh, dag is stands for the directed acyclic graph okay we have discuss it in the uh, different types of the intermediate core okay so our today's point here is what can we utilize the dag uh, to do the optimization and specifically to do the local optimization okay so uh, yes uh, dag is a very useful data structure for implementing the transformation on the basic block means dag can be utilized to do the optimization okay dag can be utilized to do the uh, optimization so today we are going to discuss about uh, how utilizing the dag optimization can be done how the dag is helping to do the optimization okay so uh, as i mentioned here dag is constructed for the optimizing the basic block okay Uh, a dag is usually constructed using the three address code that already you know uh, in the previous lectures we have discussed okay so can the dag perform the optimization uh, in particular basic block that we have to discuss so using the dag uh, two kind of uh, optimization can be done okay one in that is the dead code elimination can be done and another is the common sub expression elimination can also be done with the help of the dag okay so we'll just see uh, how it can be done uh, before that you must able uh, must understand what are the different purposes of uh, uh, utilizing the dag or the different application of such dag so to determine the expression which have been computed more than once means to detect the common sub expression there is utilization of dag okay now how dag can uh, determine or detect the common sub expression that i will tell you in the next example okay so that is one of the application of dag to determine or detect the common sub expression then to determine the names whose computation has been done outside the block but use inside the block to detect that thing also there is utilization of dag as well as to detect or determine the statement of the block whose computed value can be made available outside the block so for the different purpose dag is utilized but dag is most beneficial or uh, uh applicable to this first application that is to detect the expression that is the uh, whose value already being computed such kind of expression we are calling as a common sub expression so for the detection of common sub expression generally dag is most useful okay 
Now, how to construct the DAC? DAC also, last time I told you, still I have mentioned here the rules of constructing the DAC. Like, you know, the interior nodes always represent the operators in the DAC. External node always represent the name identifier or the constant. So in the rule two, while you are constructing the DAC, uh, always check is uh, made or uh, every time you have to see I, and check or the examine uh, if there exists uh, any node with the same value. So in case of the DAC, for the same value, if there are the four, five same values are there in your program or sub expression are there in the program, then using the DAC, these things can be easily detected because we uh, uh, draw the DAG or da draw, uh, da DAG is designed or uh, made uh, in case of that only the uh, single node is being drawn only the single node is there in the DAG for the particular multiple same values okay so as I mentioned here a new node is created only when there does not exist any node with the same value if there are the four, four to five sub expression same sub expressions are there in your code then for that, uh, only one node can be, uh, only one node is uh, uh, created uh, by using the DAG. Okay, so according to the properties of the DAG, for the same value, only one node is exist. Even if there are the five, four, six same values are there, for all that value, only one node is exist in the DAG. And that helps in detecting the common sub expression in the DAG. Okay. So this property that I'm telling you, this property uh, of the DAG helps to detect the common sub expression, understood. And because of that, recomputation of that expression is also get avoided. If the common sub expression is detected, then its recomputation is avoided. Okay. So how it is possible? It is possible because of the property of the DAG. What is the property of the DAG? Property is what? Only one node is being created for multiple same values okay and because of that common sub expression can be easily detected okay let's see the example so that you will get the clear idea now we have given the example uh, a in bracket a plus b into another bracket a plus b plus c so for this three address code for this three address code can be written like this okay i am showing you here the two cases okay uh, three address code which is unoptimized and the next I will show the three address code which is optimized. So this is unoptimized three address code. So three address code be generated like this for this sub expression T1 equal to A plus B. Then for next sub expression also you can have the uh, uh, three address code T2 equal to A plus B. Then T3 equal to this, this result is in the T2 that's why the T2 plus C and lastly T4 equal to T1 into T3. This is T1, this is T3. Okay. Now if you go for drawing the or creating the DAC for this, now you can see T1 equal to A plus B. So you will draw like this T1 equal to A plus B. What is the name of that node? T1. Then T2 equal to also the A plus B. Now in the DAC, separate node will not be created for the T2 because A plus B is already computed and it is all node for that already uh, created here. So as according to the property of the DAC, no, if the always checking has to be made or the uh, check has to be done okay you have to see in the DAG for the particular now for this sub expression already node is created now again same sub expression is getting repeated so you can see here by making the comma I am writing here the T2 understood because A plus B is already computed understood A plus B is already computed understood and according to the property of DAG for the same value if for the particular sub expression which is uh, appearing uh, multiple number of times only one node is created what only one node is created so that's why we are writing like uh, t1 comma t2 because t1 is also representing the same sub expression and the t2 also representing the same sub expression so that is the reason here you can see only one node is created here for the two expression because a plus b is what a plus b is a common sub expression then t3 equal to t2 plus c like this you can have and t4 equal to t into 3 like this okay now this is the DAG for the unoptimized code and you can easily see here t1 comma t2 now this DAG easily can uh, easily uh, tell us that these two 
T1 and the T2. This both of this uh, uh, storing the same result that is of A plus B. Okay, that is the result of A plus B. Understood. So then you can see here the common sub expression is getting detected easy because you have given two names to the single node. What you have given the two names to the single node. It means what? This is the common sub expression, which A plus B. Understood, and that is the reason. In case of the DAG, such kind of uh, expression, the common sub expression can be easily get detected. If there are the more than one name is given to the node, you can easily see here. It means that this is the common sub expression. Understood. So if you if you optimize this code now, this op after optimizing this code can be written like this: T1 equal to A plus B, and T2 equal to T1 plus C because T1 already you have computed and it result in the T1. So why should you uh, write this second intermediate code statement for the A plus B again? No need. So then T2 equal to T1 plus C, T3 equal to, and for this, this is a again you can see uh, this is a, a modified uh, directed cyclic graph. Okay, for this optimized code. So here you can see T1 contain T1 containing the result of A plus B. Okay. So here, as I see, you can see the common sub expression A plus B has been expressed into a single node in the DAG. Which single node? This single node. Okay. So the computation is carried out only once, and the store result is uh, store and uh, result is stored in the T1 and can be reused later. So here, you can see here we have computed it once and we have stored the result in the T1. And that here I can see it is again repeated. So next time we will not going to compute the A plus B. We will just utilize the variable who's storing the result of that A plus B. That is T1. Okay. So same thing is being shown in the DAG. Okay. Here uh, T2 equal to T1 plus C. So T2 equal to T1. So this T1 is utilized plus C. Understood. So when the in the second expression T1 when the A plus B result is required, A plus B is not computed again. Okay. Instead of that T1 is utilized. Understood. So same thing is mentioned here. So from this, uh, you must able to understand that uh, this this example shows that construction scheme of DAG identify the common sub expression. Which common sub expression it identify A plus B, and because of that the because of identification of common sub expression, uh, it help us to uh, eliminate its recomputation as uh, a uh, recomputation later. Okay, as a part of the local optimization so here there is a no required to uh, uh, recompute the a plus b okay because a plus b result is already being stored here in the t1 okay so in this way you can easily see how dag uh, help us to determine or to detect the common sub expression here as you can see here okay in this in this uh, example or in this example understood so here as i have mentioned the common sub expression a plus b has been expressed into a single node in the dag even it is repeated two times in case of the dag it is being represented using the single node only understood so in this way uh, the directed cyclic graph help us to do the uh, local optimization understood and how it helps that as uh, you can see the in this example that i have shown you uh, and uh, because of the one property of the DAG, what property? That for multiple same values, only the single node is uh, created. So because of that, the common sub expression is can be get easily detected. Understood? So that is uh, all about uh, uh, about the uh, DAG based uh, local optimization. Okay. So uh, I hope all of you understood all this point. Uh, how the DAG identify the common sub expression that I have shown you here. Okay. And also because of detection of common sub expression, uh, there is a no need to do the recomputation of that particular expression uh, later on if that sub expression is get repeated in the further part of the program. Okay. So that's it from the today's lecture. Uh, if you have any doubt, please mention in the comment section. Okay. I will try to clear all uh, your all the doubts. Okay. Thank you all of you.